What's up guys, Justin here with DCGEssentials.com back with another decal machine tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to create custom decals for decal machine that you can then bring in and use as decals inside of your models. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I will link to more information about decal machine in the notes down below. So I did an introductory video to that which I will link to as well as I will link to the documentation page from the developer. He has a lot of great information about this as well as a video that he did on his channel about decal creation. So he gets a lot more in depth on this than I do. I wanted to give you kind of a quick overview that's really accessible so you can start creating decals inside of decal machine. I will link to the download location of decal machine as well. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by inside of Blender, you wanna tap the N key once you've installed Decal Machine, and we're gonna click on the button for Create Decals. What that's gonna do is that's gonna take us into the Decal Example or the Decal Creation window. And so the Decal Creation window is gonna be a good place where you can go in and actually create these decals and kinda of play around with them. And so I'm gonna get rid of all of this stuff and we're just gonna create our own decals. All right, so this window is basically a window designed to help us create um, different decals inside of Decal Machine. So it's going to open this up and it's basically a separate Blender file. And what we want to do in this situation is we want to model out a shape that we want to use as a decal. So if we look at these examples over here, so if we look at these, um, so like this nut that's in here, um, these are all modeled out as actual geometry inside of Blender, right? So they're very simple shapes that are modeled out as geometry. And so we wanna do something similar over here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a Shift A and we're just gonna add a circle and I'm just gonna tap into edit mode and I'm just gonna tap F to fill that in. And then we're just gonna model out a simple shape. So I'll type or I'll tap two to go into edge select mode. And we're just gonna inset this once by tapping the I key. We're gonna inset it again, and we're gonna inset it a third time. And then we'll just extrude it down, so E, and then we'll scale it in. So we'll just do an S. And then I'm just gonna extrude this back up and scale it, extrude it back up and scale it. And you can move this down if you want to. Then I'm also just gonna do an alt click, or actually I'm gonna type three to go into face select mode, and then I'm gonna do an alt click, and I'm gonna select this edge loop, and I'm gonna extrude it down a little bit. So basically what we've done is just created a very simple shape, right? That could be like any inset that happens on a surface um, inside a blender. And so it's a very simple shape. And so one thing you may notice is I've got this positioned exactly on the origin right here. So it's usually better to not move things around and just leave the origin where it is. So you want the top of the surface to be aligned with your object origin. That's gonna affect the way that the parallax and the way that the actual object depth is created. But we're not gonna to worry too much about that for right now. What we're gonna do is with this selected, we're gonna click on the button for Create Simple Decal. All right, so if we look at this, you can see that what this did is this created a decal based on our geometry. So if I move this, so we're gonna maybe move this over here, and we take a look at it, it's basically created a decal shape that is simulating that geometry that we created in our object. So that decal is now here. It also is going to show up in our instant decals folder. So if you look at this, this is the one that was created. So you can see how I've created a couple other test versions of that as well. But specifically, we want to access this decal. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a shape. So let's do a Shift A and let's just add a Suzanne over here. And we'll go ahead and right click and we'll shade it smooth. So we'll just use this as our example. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna add a new material. We'll go ahead and make it like a blue material. And we'll bring the roughness on that down a fair amount. So something like this. And so that's gonna act as our example geometry that we're gonna place things on. And so let's add this decal that we created to this Suzanne. So the way that we're gonna do that, so we're just gonna click here, we're gonna select that decal. Notice how that's gonna bring that in and place it wherever our um, wherever our 3D cursor is. Well, I'm just gonna type the G key, and then remember you wanna hold control 
once you've tapped the G key in order to bring this over and place it on your object. And so right now what we're doing is we're basically just testing out this decal, right? So if we look at this, this created a decal that as long as I hold G and I hold the control key to move this around, this is going to align with those faces. So it's doing exactly what we want it to do. And with decal machine, remember you can tap D and uh, hit A or click on adjust in order to adjust that. So you can adjust the height above the object. You can roll your mouse button around to rotate it, which in this case doesn't really matter because it's symmetrical. So you can see how you can adjust this. You can also tap the D key and then under match, you can match materials. So I can scroll. So if I hold shift and I scroll, this is gonna scroll between the different materials that we have in our model. So you can see how this is working pretty much the way that we would like for it to work. So that's probably gonna be the simplest way to create a decal like this one. And so one thing I haven't actually tested, so let's go ahead and do that right now, is if we duplicate this over here, and we right click and we click shade smooth. Let's see what that does to our decal creation process. So if we, if we click create simple decal, and so if we look at this decal and we add in the newest version of that instead, and we'll just move it over here for right now. If you look at that, that's actually also shaded smooth. So that smooth shaded geometry that we used in order to create this gets incorporated in our decal. And so there's a lot of things we could do with this. I don't want to get too far into like applications of decals in this video. We can talk a ton about that in a future video, but this is how you can use geometry in order to create decals inside of decal machine. One thing to note is notice that was taking me a little while in order to do that. Part of the reason is because the resolution I was using was super high. And so what that means is that means that this is taking longer to bake everything. If you were to bring your resolution down, what that would do, so let's say we were to select like 128 and create a simple decal from this. So we're going to create simple decal, but it's going to be a 128. What's going to happen is this is going to be much smaller when we bring it in. So if we use this decal right here, notice how that's a way smaller image. So it's definitely lower resolution in here, but in addition to being lower resolution, it's, it gets created a lot faster. So one thing I wanna note about this is you really wanna add a bevel modifier to this object when you create it. So when you bevel it, what that means is that means that you're gonna get this kind of like smooth reflective corner around these edges. So otherwise things are gonna look really kind of blocky and chunky when you create this. So make sure that you apply that bevel. It doesn't have to be giant. So you don't have to have like a huge offset or anything like that. Just enough that you're getting a little bit of smoothness to these edges. So notice how I'm able to quickly add this bevel modifier and get these smooth edges. So now let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and bump this resolution up a little bit, maybe to like 512. And we're gonna go ahead and create this simple decal now. So now if I jump back into material preview mode and take a look at this. So if I move this over, notice how I'm getting a much better effect along this edge, kind of a reflective effect than I would have been getting otherwise. So adding that bevel modifier is gonna be important. It's just gonna give you a better look. So if I go ahead and add this in, so I'm just gonna move this, hold the control key, and then scale it down just a bit. But notice how I'm getting a much better result on my corners right here. So it blends a lot better because we have that bevel effect in here. And so now let's talk about a couple other kinds of decals that we can create. So I don't wanna to get too far into panels in this one. So panels are basically um, objects that you can use in order to create like a profile where two objects intersect. I don't wanna do that too much, but I do wanna talk about how to create both text and also image decals. So for example, let's say that I have a warning sign. So I have a warning sign decal that I've downloaded from Pixabay right here, which I will link to in the notes down below. It's basically just a warning sign right here. So it's a simple PNG image file. And I wanna bring that in as a decal. So I've downloaded that. And so what we can do is if you go into the option for info right here, that's gonna allow you to create an info decal. And so an info decal is gonna allow you to create a decal from image, text, or geometry. We're gonna focus on image and text. So 
let's say, and I'm going to clear this image for just a second, but let's say that we wanted to load in an image file. Well, we would just go into the image, load images, and we would just go find that downloaded file. So in this case, I've got this image right here. So we've got that selected. Um, it's a PNG, meaning it's transparent outside of the image itself, um, or it supports transparency and it's been set up with that transparency. But we just want to click on the button for create info decal. Well, now if you look at this, this has created a decal based on that image. And so it shows up in our instant decals folder right here. Well, now we could just bring that in by clicking. We can just move it and then hold the control key in order to align it. And we'll just scale it down. So notice how I was able to create a decal from this image really quickly. So creating decals from images is really easy. In addition, creating decals from text is really easy. So let's say that we wanted to add some text in here. So we could click on the text button right here and you can select different font files. So in this case, there's one loaded in. You could load other custom fonts as well. But let's say that we wanted to create a test file with the word warning. So what you would do is you want to type in the word warning in your text box right here. So if we do that and then we click on create info decal, notice how that's going to create a decal with the word warning in it. That's going to show up in our instant decals folder as well. So now you can select that. You can move it, hold the control key, and you can add a warning decal really quickly to your object as well. And so let's create one other thing and then we'll talk about how to save these. And notice I'll be bookmarking all of this in the notes down below so you can go find that in the bookmarks too. But let's say that we wanted an object that has multiple different colors. So let's do a shift A and we'll go ahead and add a plane. So a plane is usually a pretty good place to start when you're creating decals. But let's say that we wanted a plane. We'll just make this very simple. So I'm just going to extrude this down, scale it in. So let's say we had another object. So we'll just add another plane. We'll move it over here. We'll scale that down. I'm just going to tab into edit mode and extrude it up. So very simple, right? And so let's say that we wanted to create a decal that has multiple different material types associated with it. So what we could do is we could select our two objects. So we're going to select our cube right here, and then we're going to do a shift click and we're going to select our other object. And what we're trying to do here is the, the last object that you select needs to be the one with the plane that we want to use. So for example, or the origin on the correct plane. So notice how the origin for this one is at the top while the origin for the second one is at the bottom. Well, we just want to select this and do a shift click and select this. And we're just going to create a simple decal. And in this case, because we have multiple objects selected, it's going to tell us that we can create a subset decal. And so what that means is it's creating a decal with multiple parts. And so that decal, if we click on it, and then we apply it to our object. So G, hold control, and we'll scale it up a little bit. But now for this one, because this is a subset decal, we can tap D and we can do our matching. And so basically what this means is this means you can tap D in order to set the material of one piece here. And then you can tap S and scroll this in order to take the subset and apply a different material to it. So the subset decal is basically allowing you to have a multi-part part decal in here, part of which gets shaded one way and part of which gets shaded the other way. And then you just left click to get out of that. And then you're left with a decal that's both emissive in one part with another color in another part. And then finally, let's talk about how to save these decals. So for example, let's say you wanted to save this multi-part subset decal right here. Well, you can select it and then down below, there's an option in here to add decals to whatever libraries you have active. And remember that there are multiple library options that you can turn on or off in the decal machine settings over here. 
So you can turn on and off these multiple different libraries or you can create your own in here as well. So for example, let's say I wanted a custom decals library. I could create that over here. Well now, inside of this dropdown, there's a custom decals that you can select and you could name this. So you could name this subset example and click on the button to add that decal to the library. So now that's gonna show up in your library inside of decal machine. So custom decals has this one decal in here. So same thing, if we wanted to add this image right here, we could just create that as warning and add that to that library. So now both of those show up in here. And so you can add as many decals in here as you want to, I believe, using this function. And then finally, once you're done with this, you can remove decals from your instant decals folder. So for example, I've got a lot of duplications in here. I don't really need these different things. So you can click on this button right here to remove decals in order to remove that from your temporary instant decals library. So I could click in here, delete this, delete this, delete this. Notice they are getting removed from my object over here, but since this is really a test library, it's probably not that big of a deal. So once you've moved these into a library, you can manage them just by doing this. And so now if I go into this model and I tap D and I look at my custom decals library, I can bring these decals in right here. So I can scale this down, move it, and then hold the control key while I'm doing that in order to add that decal. All right, so that's from in this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Have you created custom decals for Decal Machine before? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.